Hello everybody, I'm David Serpa, and sellers often ask me, David, what can I do to get my house ready to sell? We're not ready to sell yet. I don't want to talk to a real estate agent. I just want to know what I should and should not be doing to get my house ready to sell. So these are the 10 rules to follow when getting your house ready to sell. Number one, don't over improve for your neighborhood or for your budget. I actually had somebody ask me, and it's okay, that's why we're watching this video. Should I put in a pool in order to sell? I, hope, I heard that pool homes sell more quickly. Do not put in a pool if you're getting ready to sell. For every dollar that you spend, you should get two back in return or at least help you break even and sell more quickly. So, on to rule number two. If I spend money on my house, David, what should I spend money on? Kitchens, bathrooms, and closets are typically where you see money come back. But before you go and spend money on these improvements, I do suggest that you talk to a good real estate agent on what you should and should not be doing. For example, you don't want to spend money updating your kitchen that was built in 1992, 1996, if you're in South Temecula or whatnot, if you have $4,000 in termite damage on the inside of your house that you're going to need money for. Section 1 termite damage will prevent a loan from funding. So make sure that you're spending your money wisely. Rule number three, if you can smell it, you can't sell it. So contact your local Scentsy rep or whoever it is that you need to talk to and understand that if your house is stinky, get those carpets clean, plug in a Scentsy, open those windows up, and let the clean air come through and wash it out. Rule number four, green cells, period. If you have a dead front lawn or just dead brown spots, you can actually paint your lawn with a non-toxic, semi-permanent paint that will last for up to six months that is rain resistant and it will help you have that healthy green lawn in your pictures. And then you have to disclose that on the transfer disclosure statement, so the property questionnaire if you're in California. And just understand that when people walk up, they're gonna be able to know, know that it was painted anyway. So don't get too worried about that. Number five, declutter. Put it in the garage. Now, there are two different energies at work in real estate, men and women, and we're gonna talk about both of them on another video. <laughs> but for right now, understand that women make the decisions when it comes to real estate. Men, I'm sorry, it's just not you. Men typically look past clutter. Women, when they walk into a house and they see a messy house, if they see scuffed up walls, they don't look past it as well, okay? So, Pick up all that extra stuff, pick up that ugly leather lazy boy that's sitting there, put it in the garage. If you have an entire wall completely covered in photo albums, you have to take down every photo. If you have an entire wall that's just covered in stuff, take it down, less is more. Put it in the garage. Why? Because men look out back and then they look in the garage and they'll look past stuff like that. You could have your entire garage filled from floor to ceiling with boxes and you're going to be all right. Because the guy's going to look at it and be like, oh, it's a three-car garage. There's some room for me. <laughs> There's room for you. You're all right. Okay, rule number six. Consider programs that can help you improve your home to sell without getting involved um, with investors. Okay? There are lots of programs out there. Both of the lenders that I work with offer them. Um, and it is a way for you to keep the equity in your house, have somebody spend the money up front for you, and they get a small portion a very small portion. In fact, I don't know how they do it. And this isn't one of those pitchy things. I don't know how they do it and keep in business, but they want your loan on the purchase side if they can get it. Update your house, sell it, pay them out of the proceeds, and then that way you never have to take that money out of your pocket, but you still get to improve your home. Pretty cool, right? Rule number seven. People think that two things are dirty, so tuck them away. We all have them, kids and dogs. Tuck away the kid stuff and the baby stuff and the dog stuff and the cat stuff. Clean out your litter box. Do everything that you need to do to keep your house smelling clean and looking clean and devoid of pets and poopy diapers and things like that because people don't want to live in something that they think is dirty. Fair enough, fair enough. I have kids and dogs. They are dirty. <laughs> okay, eight, show often. People say, how much, uh, how much notice should I require in order to show my house? Don't require any notice. If you, if you give them 15 minutes, give them 15 minutes. Two hours is reasonable, but if you give them 15 minutes, it just takes one person to want to buy your house and to give you what you want for it in order to make everyone happy, right? 
So be seriously inconvenienced for two weeks, sell your house for top dollar, rather than being kind of inconvenienced for two months and then taking a negative hit to your equity. Fair enough? Okay, rule number nine, don't be polarizing with your house. If somebody walks in and there's a giant buckhead on the wall and you're in Southern California, it might be a good idea to take it down. And I'm sorry to my past client that you had the buckhead on the wall. We're friends, I hope you can apologize or you can understand. We took it down, we took it off the wall and we got that thing sold, okay? Understand your market. You don't want to have your political posters up everywhere. I don't care who you voted for or what you think the area is. There's a good chance that anywhere from 40 to 60% of the people disagree with you and it just takes one. So rule number nine, stop being polarizing with your house. Take down the things that even though you believe in, religious, political, or otherwise, might be polarizing to a buyer that is trying to see your house as their own. Rule number 10, consult with a real estate professional. I know a lot of you are rolling your eyes here, but even if it's not me, even if you're in my market, that's okay. You wouldn't let your brother, your uncle, your friend, your cousin work on your car if it was their first time working on a car or their sixth time working on a car. Why would you let them touch the thing in your house that has the most value as an investment than anything else that you own. The top 10 rules to live by if you're getting your house ready to sell. I'm David Serpa, president and owner of the Homes Team, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for access to more good stuff like this.